Hey everyone, Ryan here, or m &R Productions, and welcome to my LEGO Star Wars Summer 2021 Wave Overview, where hopefully you'll be able to get a good idea of what you might want to buy out of the LEGO Star Wars Summer 2021 Wave. This video won't quite cover every set released during the time period, because I don't quite count the Advent Calendar, nor a UCS set, as part of the mainline LEGO Star Wars Wave, so those won't be covered here. You'll actually be able to check those out if you want to see my in-depth thoughts on the UCS gunship or the advent calendar with a couple links in the description below to direct reviews of those sets. Anyway, we have eight sets that I consider to be part of the main line for LEGO Star Wars in summer of 2021. We're going to go through some budget scenarios later in the video. We'll figure out what the best set, the best minifigs, the worst set, the worst minifigs, you know, things like that. And if you enjoy these wave overviews, make sure you hit that like button to show your support. Starting out with some basic info on all eight mainline sets here, I think it's important to note that the box art is great on these. They're continuing on with this white Greeble LEGO piece box art for LEGO Star Wars as kind of the main thing theming and then they have the side box art on all of the sets this time there was an issue earlier this year where the art wasn't matching up the way that it should and this time they've got it down pat it looks so much better when you have everything where it should be and on top of that they have the characters denoting which piece of media a particular set is supposed to be based off on the top right of the box of course for the bad batch shuttle we have three characters from the bad batch and we have mando for the moff gideon's cruiser and then for the clone Wars sets continuing from 20 20 we have a 330 second trooper and then of course for normal sets we would have darth vader but there are no uh mainline normal sets uh from the original trilogy except for the 18 plus darth vader transformation set which of course is in the 18 plus style box art for adults so it's got the all black art and doesn't have the correlating white greeble art so a little bit different there but yeah boxes are spectacular for this summer wave some basic info on the eight mainline sets here is that if you were gonna buy them all at retail price would cost you about 530 bucks and that is less any applicable taxes that you may end up paying and of course depending on where you live some currency changes with that 530 bucks you'd be receiving a total of 4,988 pieces and a total of 27 minifigs with all of these sets that comes out to 10.6 cents per piece and about $20 a minifig so quite expensive on a per minifig basis but your price per piece is pretty good at 10.6 I know a lot of people put a lot into price per piece i personally don't i think it's pretty obvious that a lot of these sets use smaller pieces than sets uh, in the past have for similar price ranges so you kind of get the idea there that price per piece may not be the end all be all and it certainly shouldn't be but anyway if we include the gunship and the advent calendar the totals go up to 920 dollars for all now 10 sets and 8,615 pieces along with 35 total minifigs so quite a bit there if you're going to go full hog in for everything that came out in the months of august and September. These are the three best play sets for the summer 2021 lineup. First up, we have the Armored Marauder here, and you get some nice Imperial figures along with Grief Cargo, so you can have some interaction there. And then the actual vehicle is incredibly packed with features, including stud shooters, swiveling cannons, and some interior space. So I think that's a really good one for 40 bucks as a play set. Second best play set to me is Moff Gideon's Imperial Light Cruiser here. This thing is a beast as far as play features go. You also have good and bad characters so you can reenact some fights that you may have seen in the Mandalorian season two of course your spring-loaded shooters on top and a massive interior space inside of this panel unfortunately it does leave a little bit to be desired on the back end for play functionality but you also have like the tie fighter shooter this set just has a lot going for it for play and then you have the armor's forge here where you have a lot of great play features packed in including a lunch table a little bit odd but like there's just a lot packed into this set for 30 bucks nice little functions and doors that can open and of course the actual forge that there. It looks really good, so I think that's a really nice playset at 30 bucks as well. So these are the three best playsets for summer 2021. As far as best sets for display, there are really just two options to me. Well, unless you really want to count in the UCS gunship, then of course that's a good one for display. But as far as the mainline sets, the Darth Vader transformation really hits all the marks of a great display set. Of course, it's also made with that adult branding in mind. You get a couple of figures that are going to fit perfectly onto the set, and you have a little display plaque. It's all black. It looks amazing. The white contrasts nicely. I just really love 
love that one for display set. And then we also have the Slave 1, which is a bit of an odd one to say good for display, but they literally made a essentially display stand for this set at 50 bucks, and so you can prop it up and put it on display on a shelf or desk or something, and it's small enough to fit on a desk, so I think it works. So those are my two best display sets for the summer lineup. The set with the best minifigures to me is the Bad Batch Shuttle, as we get the full Bad Batch squad there, minus Omega, and we also have an additional gonk droid, of course, tech with his brand new helmet mold. We have the Imperial Crosshair, Hunter, Echo, and Wrecker. I think this is a great figure selection and certainly, in my opinion, the best of the summer lineup. Also very, very good is the Mandalorian Starfighter, as we have the Mandalorian Loyalist, we have Bo-Katan, and the oh-so-beautiful Gar Saxon. So hot right there. So that's a great figure selection as well. And then the third best figure selection for me in the summer lineup is going to be the Imperial Light Cruiser here. While we do receive some figures we had already received, we get three brand new ones in this set with the Dark Trooper, Moff Gideon, and of course, Fennec Shan there on the left, and those three characters are so so, so good looking. So all six figures in there, very good. But these are the best figure selections for the summer lineup of sets. Very good stuff in these ones. These sets represent the best value for your money here. We have three sets and starting out with the Bad Batch Shuttle, I think is the best value for the money. As much as I don't love some of the aspects of the build, for $100, you're getting all five Bad Batch members there and a gonk droid, which is a great character selection just straight up. Like that in itself is worth a lot in my opinion. And then we have two speeder bikes as well as a rather uh, fine Bad Batch shuttle minus again some aspects of the build, maybe the color depending on who you are. But I think as far as like getting everything in one package, very much worth the money. At $60, of course, we have the Mandalorian Starfighter here, and this one only $10 more expensive than its predecessor from about nine years ago, and it has three totally wicked figures. I think that's worth a lot as well. And then as the fourth best value for your money here, we have the Imperial Armored Marauder, a set that I was pretty low on coming into it, but I have been very impressed with. The four figures are really good, and then we also have a very solid build. In 478 pieces, while price for pieces and everything, that's going to get a lot of people in the door there too at under under 10 cents per piece, very close to eight actually. But I just think it's a solid build. Like, I don't know how else to explain it. It's got a lot going for it. So for 40 bucks, I think that's very worth it. And of course, with some sales, as you'll see at Target, Walmart, Amazon, etc., and other retailers across the world, you can get things for better prices. And that can obviously change maybe your answer for something like this. But at the retail prices, I think this is the best you can get as far as value for your money goes. And yes, having exclusive characters really does matter here. It is part of what makes something valuable. These are the three most accurate looking sets to me. And in this case, I'm gonna say no particular order here. I also had some qualms with putting this one in here because it's got a base that I guess would technically be inaccurate. But I feel like this one has so many details that they went out of their way to have and be accurate, like even down to the figures on the screen there. I feel like this one should be in this category. So uh, I think that one's definitely in there with the Darth Vader meditation chamber. And then we also have the Mandalorian Starfighter here. I think the Starfighter is pretty spot on as far as the Starfighter, obviously minus the stud shooters and the string loaded shooters, but those are well hidden enough, in my opinion, that it passes. And then we also have the figures, which are really, really spot on, and that is important for accuracy of a set as well. And same is gonna go for the duel on Mandalore here with Ahsoka and Darth Maul. Now, the reason this one didn't make best value is the Ahsoka is not exclusive, uh, just in case you were wondering. But the throne, I think, is really great. And of course, the Mandalorian jail thing that they have for Darth Maul here is really good with that sticker. I think that sticker goes a long way with all of the detail included in there. Really spot on. I checked it with the uh, material in the Clone Wars and it's very accurate. So these are the three most accurate sets of the Summer Wave, although I wouldn't say any of these blow me away with their accuracy. I think there's definitely better options from years past, but I had to pick something. So the, these are what got picked. To me, there's only one set that fit the parameters for worst value, and it's the Duel on Mandalore. And don't get me wrong, this is a set I like, and it's a set I frankly think most people should own. However, I think 20 bucks is just way too much for what you're getting here. You're getting a figure that is recycled from summer of 2020, and at that point, a lot of people probably already have it. And then we have a Darth Maul. And while the Darth Maul is very, very good, and it's an upgrade, and it's a season seven version of Darth Maul, there is a Darth Maul available uh, in a book that was 20 bucks. So like, there's not a lot of value in like exclusive 
exclusivity to a character like that when it's just another version. On top of that, the builds definitely are lacking. They're small. Not that there really is much to add to them. You would have to do a completely ginormous playset if you really wanted something valuable, I guess. But at the $20 price point, you really should have just knocked $5 off and 15 bucks would have been a very, very fair price for what you're getting here. I mean, realistically, for charging 20 bucks, they should have included a clone trooper to guard Darth Maul's little jail cell there. It would have gone a long way for a lot of people in this set. As good as this one is, it just, it's lacking something for its full price. As far as worst minifigs go, these two sets are pretty exemplary of what could have been. So we have the armorer's Mandalorian Forge here, and the armor is the figure in question here. It's probably the worst figure to me of the entire summer lineup. The helmet mold is just wrong. She probably could have used some type of cape to have her like fur coat or whatever it is she's wearing. Like there's just a lot to be desired there as far as this character. It's passable, it works, whatever, but stop defending Lego. It's just wrong and it's lazy and it's cheap. It is what it is. Now, on the other side of the table here, we have the Mandalorian and Boba Fett. The Mandalorian, great, just like it is in the Armorer's Forge. However, Boba Fett is our character in question. With the new Boba Fett in Season 2 of Mandalorian, his helmet is supposed to match the torso color spot on. He repainted it, and this is supposed to be a repainted Boba Fett. However, uh, I, don't, I don't know if you can tell, but there's a different color green on the helmet than there is on the torso, and I'm not a fan of that, so I don't think that looks very good. It certainly isn't very accurate. It can be aesthetically pleasing, I suppose, and be inaccurate, but either way, it's wrong. So these are the two characters that I think LEGO did the poorest job on out of the entire summer lineup. Does it make them bad sets to buy or poor character selections? The figures are just done poorly and cheaply. The big old question of did we really need another one of those? And the slave one certainly fits that. It, one had just retired at the end of 2020, so we got another one, what, eight months later? Did we really need another one? It's very much up for debate, I suppose, with it having shown up in The Mandalorian. I suppose that could create a need. However, literally one had just retired and they could have just kept it on the shelves longer knowing that another one was going to be needed anyway. It's also the only reason in the summer wave so it's the only one that can really count for that and attack on to this i also believe this slave one is the most unexpected set given that one had just retired and the fact that all of the rumors surrounding this set were really pointing towards an original trilogy slave one with a regular old boba fett and han solo so seeing the slave one come out and be from the mandalorian was a big shock to many people on top of the fact that the slave one was coming out literally just after the retirement of the last one so i think this fits the bill for both categories i just went through so I have tried to limit myself to just three per category max. However, as far as the best investments go, I ended up with five sets here. And I want to run through my reasoning real quick on each set. But I do want to caveat that, of course, my investment advice can't be taken for granted here. It, nothing is guaranteed. I cannot possibly guarantee that any of these will even go up in value. They could be completely worthless tomorrow. That's very, very, very unlikely, but that's something that's on the table, and you have to remember if you're investing in LEGO sets, you are spending your money with the chance of coming out with very little. However, the historical average for LEGO sets has been up, 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 so that's worth noting as well. Anyway, I also should say that uh, I should probably do a whole separate video on LEGO investing advice at this point if I'm picking five sets out of the summer lineup, but I wanna explain my rationale for each of these. So I would typically stay away from sets like this where you have a figure in a $30 set that's also in like eight other sets with the Mandalorian and Beskar armor, but despite my personal distaste for the armor, I can see a potential future market where the armor is worth 20 or $30 alone and same for Paz Vizsla, those figures could just be expensive and therefore drive the price of this particular setup. The same is going to go here for the Artillery Stormtrooper and Grief Karga being exclusive to this set. I just see a lot of value in that. Figures usually are a large part of driving the value for old retired sets. Speaking of figures, with the Imperial Light Cruiser here, we have the Dark Trooper, Moff Gideon, and Fennec Shand all exclusive to the set, and that's not to guarantee that any of those will remain exclusive in the future, and I certainly wouldn't be investing in this set now. I would be waiting like a year to make sure that none of those figures come out again, at least not uh, as far as you can tell for the time being. But yeah, that seems like a potentially good one uh, if you wait long enough into the future to go in on that. And then we have the Mandalorian Starfighter here, which has Gar Saxon, a Bo-Katan, and Mandalorian Loyalist. Do I need to say more? And then of course, the Bad Batch Attack Shuttle. And this is probably uh, another one with a big caveat, much like the Imperial Light Cruiser, because if these characters start showing up in other sets that are much cheaper, well, then you are going to be... Uh, 
not looking so hot on your investment, but if they don't, all of a sudden you've got your exclusive Hunter, Wrecker, Tech, Echo, and Crosshair figures. And given that they are the main characters of the Bad Batch, they could become quite pricey quite quickly following the retirement of a set like this. Now, obviously these sets have just come out, so investing in them now I think would be quite foolish, but those, in my opinion, are the sets that have the best potential, at least right now, uh, for a good return in the future. Although, of course, it's hard to know exactly what may or may not happen. Let's go through some budget scenarios. I got a lot of great feedback from the last time I did one of these videos like this, so let me know what you think in the comments below. But if you got 50 bucks, I think there's some pretty good combos you can pick up. So we'll start out with the set that is $50, and that's the Slave 1. The only reason you should be buying this Slave 1 is if you don't own another Slave 1. The Book of Boba Fett slash Mando Season 2 version of Boba Fett is almost undoubtedly going to come in more sets in 2022, so I would not buy this Slave 1 unless you just don't have a Slave 1 and want a Slave 1. Also, if you got 50 bucks, you can afford the Imperial Armored Marauder, which ain't too bad. You'll still have $10 left over, and maybe even if you wait for a sale, you can get this for $32, this for $16, and all of a sudden you can get both for $48, which is under that $50 budget, or for $50 flat, you can get the Armors Mandalorian Forge with the Duel on Mandalore, which is a pretty nice duel of sets, good figures that you'll be getting between the two there. So there's some options at 50 bucks, which are all pretty good. If you're at Walmart and you got a hundred bucks burning a hole in your pocket, well, you got some pretty good options as well. You can get the Clone Wars Lovers Pack, essentially, with the Mandalorian Starfighter and the Duel on Mandalore to have a great Mandalore scene there, so that's good for $80 total. You can spend all $100 on the Bad Batch Shuttle if you really liked the Bad Batch and you really like that Bad Batch Shuttle, because for 100 bucks, you better really like that. There's definitely some that love it, some that hate it, but you'll also be getting all five Bad Batch members, minus Omega, who is technically a sixth, I guess, or really the fifth. I don't know. It's confusing, right? And then also for the display, folks, you got to go with Darth Vader's Meditation Chamber here at 70 bucks. You'll still have 30 bucks left over. Maybe you can get a 12 pack and uh, enjoy your building experience. But yeah, for 70 bucks, it fits right in that $100 range. And if you're looking for something to display, that is definitely the one to go for, I think. And finally, if you have $200, I got a few options for you as well. Of course, a Clone Wars Lovers Pack can never go wrong. For $180, you can get all three Clone Wars style base sets from the summer lineup, and you'll probably be pretty happy with that. One of the Mando Lovers packs I got is the Imperial Light Cruiser with the Imperial Armored Marauder, and it works out rather well as you get two nice Imperial ships for your Imperial Army. And then for $200 as well, you can get five TV show sets here with the Duel on Mandalore, the Mandalorian Starfighter, the Armor's Mandalorian Forge, the Imperial Armored Marauder, and of course the Slave One here. That gives you five Lego sets for $200. Bucks. So I think this is a really good option if you have $200. Bucks, you just get a bunch of different sets with a lot of different characters you'll have almost no overlap in character selection here you'll just get two of the mandalorian characters so if you don't want two of those maybe swap something out there but really uh for 200 bucks this is a really nice selection of sets as always feel free to mix and match as you please but these are some good combinations of sets that i thought are decent ways to put your money together and get a bunch of different things with good variety or good focus the summer 2021 wave it was a great one with really good variety great character selections for the most part definitely some overlap maybe just one too many Many Mandalorians in Beskar armor, maybe just one too many bad helmets for the armorer. But other than that, it really is genuinely a really good wave with a lot of good diversity. And I think that's what a lot of people were hyped for coming into this one off of the January March waves, which were just all original trilogy, which is rather annoying as most Lego Star Wars fans like variety. And this whole wave really delivered on that front. So let me know what you guys think about this wave in the comments section below. If you have any other questions about the set, certainly leave them down there. You can check out individual reviews of all of these sets as well, linked on the end screen now. Peace out.